right, so off we go with the first parade of steam, if you like, and a unique little vehicle uh, leading the parade, which um, they're pretty rare. These, uh, this is a man tractor, man painted steam cart and wagon. Um, it's quite an extraordinary design. It, it's basically the same as all the other engines. It's got steam boiler and a fire and pistons that uh, go around and a flywheel. But the layout is completely different. You'll see that the driver is sat very comfortably on the inside of the engine and the firehole door is by his drive sitting down. And they did this in a variety of different uh, types. Um, as a general haulage tractor, such as the one we've got here. Um, and also they did them as a, what we call the patching roller, where they replaced the back wheels with a full width roll. And this little thing would scoot around the county, uh, filling up the pothole. Railway yard uh, to fill the uh, railway wagons. Unfortunately, they all got cut up just before preservation uh, got underway. This actually is the, the youngest man tractor that survives in preservation. Uh, as I say, it's nice to see it. It was a Beamish Museum, but it's obviously come uh, down to join the Jerry Dark stable, which is lovely. Uh, now, as I say, we Mr. Stevens were in Basingstoke in Hampshire, and they didn't build very many engines compared to other manufacturers, but they were a good sound engine and had their followers locally. It, uh, this one is a local engine belonging to Colin Hoyle from Western Zoyland, just up the road. Uh, I saw it parked in the uh, training company's yard earlier in the week before they came down here. Um, a big cause because the advent of the thrashing machine and the engine to drive it uh, was a key advancement. as we would call it, the coconut shy, the shooting stall, the hooker duck stall and things of that sort as opposed to the big, uh, big ride. And then we've got another, same but different if you like, Cornish star just coming past again for more decoration. Now, uh, I don't know what's happened to the age order system but we've now got years. Um, Vince is looking much better now. He's, he's on solid food again, I understand. <laughs> but this uh, lovely wagon, uh, as I say, was the last development really of steam wagons with a, a four-cylinder flat uh, four-engine mounted. It was run under the chassis. And the second ones were capable of well over 60 miles an hour. Uh, staff has uh, had the summons, speeding summons trained and put carried in the cab. Uh, because uh, they, they were officially done for 65 miles an hour, which was naughty of them. Built, of course, on pneumatic tyres. Um, to say the Gould family uh, are well known for their uh, Sentinel wagons, and they are also recognised as probably the major repairers of Sentinels, if that's what you c require. Now, coming along next, past the commentary box, we have Red Gauntlet, uh, Nick Baker, uh, recently acquired this engine. Um, Nick has always been a barrel man, he's had an assortment of barrels over the years, and he acquired one quite close to my heart not long ago, and then the next thing, I see it advertised for sale. So I rung him up, what the hell's going on, and he said, oh, I've found a better one. 
which indeed he had. And here is Red Gauntlet. Uh, this is a, what we call a six nominal horsepower double crack compound. Now, if you were listening earlier, I was waffling on about compounds and single cylinder engines. Well, this is the classic two cylinder engine. This amount of work overhauled the thing and it didn't actually move under its own steam for I think it was seven years, something like that. Finally, he finished it uh, and then uh, suddenly decided to put it up for sale because he wanted to fund another project. And Nick was ready and waiting uh, and was reunited with his favourite engine, a single, uh, a double crack compound burrow. He had one before which went off up to Scotland, then he had the Duke of Kent. He's a small Fowler flying engine. John Fowler and Sons uh, were in Leeds. There were a huge number of builders of steam products in Leeds. Um, and uh, they were one of 28 manufacturers of steam products in Leeds. And uh, we'll come back to him in a minute because um, I jumped a bit uh, because I didn't notice uh, this uh, roller making its way past. And in fact, Aveling and Porter were the, easily the biggest manufacturers of rollers and they were purchased in huge quantities by major fleets. Buncombs of Highbridge, for example, uh, had 130 odd rollers or something, of which this was one. Uh, and then there was Dingles in Cornwall, mechanical car spraying and grouting in Reading. A lot of rollers built. There's 800 have survived in preservation and over half of them are Aveling and Porter. Aveling were down in Kent uh, and were, as I say, the, the most prolific of the roller builders. Now so going back to the little ploughing engine, this is what we call the DDS model, it's quite new that sort. It's just a single cylinder piston valve, it's quite an unusual machine and it's very nice to see now uh, and nicely restored. Uh, now lives over in Tring and uh, say it's uh, just a, really a smaller version of a typical Fowler flowering engine product. Uh, and it's unique, as I say, it's the only one there is. Now we've got the Wallace coming round again, so we'll let him wander by. Now then, you'll be wondering what this beast is doing in the ring. We've got what looks a bit like a Fowler flowering engine with a thumping great diesel on the top. This is our Basil, Basil Gibbons. Uh, now the history of these engines is quite fascinating. They were built as a pair in steam back in... Uh, well, they're over 100 years old. I can't remember when they were built now. Uh, I'm having a mental block. Never mind. 1918, they were ministry engines. And they were owned by Beebe Brothers. Uh, Beebe's were big ploughing contractors. They had several pairs of engines. And in uh, 